people are not supposed to pay tithe. Let me break this down to you properly. Please, please if you pay tithe to any Nigerian pastor, you are a goat. Okay. Especially if you neglect what you're supposed to do. I've had people argue with me, so you think I'm giving my money to my pastor? I'm giving it to God. Hello. The transfer of earthly wealth to spiritual wealth was done in the Bible in Matthew 25. And it has nothing to do with pastors. You want to give your money to Jesus, the Bible says the people who are in the hospitals, Matthew 25 is right there. The people who are homeless, people who are hungry, people who are naked. Jesus said, each time you remember those people, you remember me. So if you want to give your money to Jesus, those are the people you should help. Not one private jet flying daddy Gio, who as far as I'm concerned, should be giving to you. Now, a lot of people are under the bondage of, there's a very popular Nigerian verse um, written by um, the lesser prophet Malachi when he was addressing uh, the people. And it's Malachi 3, 8 to 10. But because you have no biblical knowledge and you choose not to read and enlighten yourself, you fall victim. These people that are supposed to pray for you are actually praying on you. The story starts in Nehemiah 10.38. The instruction is clear. The Lord says the Levites, who are the ones that are entitled to receive the tithe, should give 10% of the tithe. Only 10% is what you give the priest to take to the storehouse. So let's imagine you pay tithe, you, you earn 100k a month, you pay tithe of 10k. Out of that 10k, 1k is what is supposed to be given to the priest. You can check it out, Nehemiah 10.38. And the priests are supposed to take it to the storehouse. Now the priests were not taking it to the storehouse. So Malachi 2 verse 1 says, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. And it extends all the way down into Malachi 3.10. So the instruction is, you are robbing me, not you, not me. The priests who are supposed to take 10% of the tithe into the storehouse are the ones robbing God, not you. Hello? And they've hoodwinked an entire nation. I, I sit down and I look. Romania has a population of about 20 million. Nigeria has 80 million Christians. So these mega churches are sitting on countries. So even if you say Nigeria is not a Christian nation, so you can't expect, hello, you get 10% of 80 million people's income. What are you doing with it? Oh, you're building more churches and enslaving more people. How does that progress transfer to electricity, to jobs, to schools? Now you're in these mega churches, you cannot get married to anyone who doesn't pay tithe in the church. More. <laughs> so, and you're expecting me not to stand? Now, if you were selling a genuine doctrine, I would say, okay, but it's a false doctrine. Jesus never paid tithe, never collected tithe never told his disciples to pay tithe. He addressed the scribes and the Pharisees when he was speaking about tithe and he spoke about it in passing and rebuking them. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. You remember to pay tithe of your herbs. And by the way, back then, tithe was herbs and um, plants and animals. And someone said to me, Daddy Freeze, there was no money back then. We keep quiet. There was money. Deuteronomy 14 from 22 to 26 breaks down tight and this as far back as the time of Moses and it says if the place the Lord has chosen for you to bring your tithe to is too far sell your tithe and bring the money and use it to buy whatever you want and the things included beer and strong drink and you are supposed to eat this foods and drink this strong drink in the place the Lord has chosen hello have you ever seen anybody drink beer inside church So, I don't know, it's like I'm sitting down here, I'm reading the Bible, I'm studying the scripture, I'm doing my research, and I'm seeing something that's absolutely different. It's like sleep and death. And then you're telling me that it is, that what you're selling to me, that I know is absolutely, I don't even see any iota of truth in it. Okay, so let's look at it from this angle. If these churches 
um, that we pay tight to. If it, if it did happen that we see them creating infrastructures that help create jobs, make the society a better place, would you say that it's safe, to, it's good to pay tight? Now you've got a good point. You see, if you read the book of Deuteronomy 14, 22 down to 26, it is stated what the tithe is meant for, and it's not every month. Tithe, the first year you're supposed to eat your tithe. Deuteronomy 14, just go out, have your time, spend your time. Reading. The second year you're supposed to eat your tithe. The third year you're supposed to give it to the Levites. The Levites are supposed to give 10% to the priests, and it goes on like that. The fourth year you eat, the fifth year you eat, the sixth year you give it to the Levites who give 10% to the priests, and the seventh year you don't tithe because that's the year you take a rest according to the law okay so i don't see how that turns to every month <laughs> but you earn money every month yes but those days to the first year you earn whatever you earn the whole year you take the tithe out of it and you go and eat it in the place the lord has chosen you, on you only give it to the levites in the third year the year of the tithe so how does something you do once in three years become something you do every month how did it evolve? Who died and it turned around like that? Then you back up tithing because you say Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek, who was a king and a priest. Hello, Abraham was coming from a war and he gave tithe of what he gathered from the war to Melchizedek. He didn't give out of his personal things and it's only recorded in the Bible once that he gave tithe. So he won a war and gave tithe out of the proceeds of that war to Melchizedek and that has now become your basis for monthly tithing. And nobody questions these things. You question them, you become a devil. Okay, so still back to my question. You didn't answer it. Still. Are you saying that if people heed to advice now and... Sorry, I was trying to answer it. That's why I went to the book of Deuteronomy. What you're supposed to do with the tithe is you're supposed to give... 10% to the priest, then the remaining 80% is supposed to take care of the Levites, is supposed to take care of the orphans, is supposed to take care of the widows, and is supposed to take care of the strangers. Like people we just see on the road. Am amongst you. So if you have a school that you built out of tight payers' money that strangers who are not members of your church cannot attend, case closed. It's not you're not doing what God said you should do. If you're building a hospital that is a profit-making hospital, it's not like it's a free hospital to treat. You set up a cancer um, center and you treat people for free. If that's not, if you're making money from it, then I still would not pay my tithe to you or advise anybody to pay their tithe to you just in case they feel like paying tithe to... Levites. And by the way, you need to understand that Levites are a lineage. I cannot be the only of Ife. Can you be the only of Ife? No. Do you know why? Because you're not born into that family. It's the same thing with the Levites. You have to be a descendant of Levi to be a Levite. It's, you don't collect it by anointing. You don't collect it by studying the scripture. It's You have to be a son of Levi. So in our present day now, who would we refer to as the Levites? Of they are there in Israel if you are looking for them. <laughs> no Nigerian man qualifies to be a Levite. A Yoruba man cannot be. Are you a descendant of Levi? Okay, so I'm still trying to... Okay, so now in our present day, of the Nigerian, the religious nature of Nigeria, mm -hmm. which church would you say is closest to the interpretation of what the Christ-like church should be? Ah, you have given me a jam question. I would say the Orthodox, the Catholic, the Anglican to an extent, the Orthodox. I would cut out the Pentecostal totally from it. I'm sorry I'm going to offend you and your pastor, but your pastor knows that what he's telling you is not the truth. So no Pentecostal church, maybe the Catholic church. Yes, they do have their own because when you go there, you don't just hear money, 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 come to me. <laughs> God is going to, you are going to receive a phone call. God is going to bless you this week. You have paid your tithe. He will rebuke her. Hello. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So the only um, church that I would say comes close is the Catholic church and maybe the Anglican church. But even those ones to you, start seeing the hand of man. <laughs> okay. So now let's talk about this, your movement. I'm sure it hasn't been... Um, completely 
free of any problems with anyone? Oh, we've had a lot of problems. So now, have you had death threats or have people come to tell you, you mustn't do this anymore, you can't talk about this anymore? Have you gotten threats from people? From a lot of people. People have threatened me with death. How do you threaten, how do you protect the word of a man who healed the ear of someone who came to attack him? The ear was cut off by his own disciple. He healed the ear and told his disciple that if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. To show you how peaceful Jesus was. And yet you defend that Jesus with violence. So it doesn't make any sense to me. We've got a lot of death threats. We've, initially it was a lot harder. People didn't believe at all. But after a while, people started seeing that this guy is making anything he tells you is in the Bible. If I tell you something and you don't find it in the Bible, ignore it. Do me a favor. Tell your pastor to preach Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 26 in church next weekend. Let's see. I've never heard any pastor preach it. You should tithe a, a 10% of your income and you should eat that tithe. It's there. It's Deuteronomy 14. They will never preach it. How, oh, they don't want to confuse you into thinking that the watch you're supposed to give them to buy private jet, you want to start eating it. But at the end of the day, when you come up with things like that, especially when you're standing against what they believe is the norm and what they they believe, nobody wants that their fantasy to be destroyed. It's like trying to tell a, Christ, a, a little child that Father Christmas does not really exist. There's no Santa Claus. No, it takes a while. And, and sometimes the children get angry. They want to believe that there's a Santa Claus, even though when they start getting older they realize that there's no santa claus but they don't want to kill that fantasy but if that fantasy is robbing you blind <laughs> i'm here to kill it okay let's go on a break we're still really going to talk about this but let's go on a break when we come back we have a whole lot of interesting things to talk about Back. We're still talking to Daddy Freeze, the leader of the Free Ship Movement. It's been so interesting. I'm sure you guys have been enjoying the journey so far. So let's dig right back into it. Yes. Now, talking about everything, literally, before we're still going to talk about the threats, I want to um, get your opinion now. We have churches that uh, people give donations to, and then they build schools, and then these uh, members of the church cannot afford to go to the school, and then you have outsiders coming to the school because they can afford it. What do you have to say about that? It's all part of the fraud. You see, if you read the Bible, Corinthians 4.11, Paul is saying, and I quote, we live in rags, we live in penury, we are hungry, we are homeless. That was the life the disciples lived. It wasn't about finances it was about salvation the other day i went on the radio and i said you know what i've cancelled unmerited favor because nigerians don't know what unmerited favor is the only unmerited favor that god is giving us is the fact that you are a sinner you do not deserve salvation and he gave it to you that's the unmerited favor. But a Nigerian man believes that you are walking down the street selling orange. You run into an old classmate. The old classmate takes you, gives you a contract. You do it illegally, steal the money, you become a billionaire. God has blessed me. So you've got to understand that the modern day interpretation of religion is a financial one. Especially Christianity. You open your bank app, you will see churches there. What? But don't you think it's just... Um, them helping the how do I put it now? Don't you think it's them helping individuals who want to make donations easier, so you don't have to wait all the way till Sunday? Why are you donating to a church? I want to ask you. Acts seven um, forty eight and seventeen twenty four is very clear. The Lord does not dwell in a building built by human hands. This is the book of Acts of the Apostles. This is the New Testament. Why are you donating to a building and a man standing on the pulpit? The book of Thomas was cut out of the Bible, it was never included in the Bible in the first place. So I use it, I cannot hold it as in the same regard as I hold books from the Bible, especially when I'm speaking to people who have their whole belief system only on the Bible. But the book of Thomas, I think it's 73b, says, 
Jesus was addressing people. He said, when I leave, lift a rock, you'd find me there. Split a wood, you'd find me there. I am in you and around you. So this notion of church being a building was what Jesus came to abolish when the, the veil in the temple was rent. He said, I will bring down this temple and rebuild it in three days. And they said it took over 40 years to build this temple. How are you going to rent it and bring, build, build it back in three days? Because they saw the temple as a physical structure. Whereas he did bring down the temple and he did rebuild it in three days. But the temple was no longer a physical structure but a spiritual structure. But we have got, you see, the spiritual structure is not going to put food on anybody's table. It's not going to buy private jet for anybody. It's not going to hire bodyguards for anyone. So they're not going to sell you that doctrine. They're going to take you back to that same temple he came to abolish. So I don't understand if you are truly a Christian, truly following Christ, why are you donating money to a building? What if it's for the purpose of, because I, um, I would like to believe there are churches that actually have projects that help people. That reach out to people it may not be up to the money that they're getting in return but they do something so people see that they actually do something so what if it's because they believe or what if people have the opinion of you know what i don't want to know what this church is doing with the money but i'm going to put it because i believe god is seeing my heart good and that takes you back to the goat in matthew 25 jesus split the nation he put the goat on the left and the sheep on the right and the goat asked him ah why are we going to everlasting hellfire and he said, because you saw me sick and you ignored me. You saw me dying and you ignored me. You saw me hungry and you, you didn't feed me. You saw me thirsty, you didn't give me water. You saw me naked and you didn't give me clothes. And he said, ah, when did we see you? When you neglected the next person. So if you're not sure what your church is doing with the money, you stand a risk of hellfire. Especially since most people in Nigeria, once they've given to the church, whatever they do as charity is little. Whereas... The way to heaven is through charity. It's there in the Bible, Matthew 25. If you want to sit by my side in the kingdom that was created before you were born, give to these people. Pastor is not included. Church is not included. So I don't know how you're able to transfer giving to the people who... Let me tell you something. You want to help the poor? Let every Nigerian give tithe, 10% of what they earn to someone poorer than them who will not have problem in this country. Because as I am now, some people see me as poor. So if Babangida gives me 10% of his 